Today I'm going to show you two easy ways to fill shapes with text in Photoshop. The first method is going to be some simple text and a simple shape, and then the second method will be a little bit more creative and fun. If you're only interested in one of these techniques, I'll leave the timestamps down below. All right, so for our first example, we're going to create a star shape and fill that with text so we have star shaped text. First, we need to of course create our shape. Going to the shape tool, I'm going to select the custom shape tool, and then I've already created a five point star here as a custom shape. If you don't know how to create stars, I'll leave a video right here showing you how to do that. With that shape selected or whatever shape you would like chosen, we'll make sure that the setting is set to shape and we'll set the fill to transparent as well as the stroke. Then I'll click and drag out on my canvas and I'll hold the shift key to keep everything uniform. Keep dragging it up to the size that you want your shape to be, or I guess the text box for your shape to be. Now you can reposition that with the move tool by pressing V until you're happy with the positioning. Next we'll grab our type tool by pressing T and we'll hover over the center of our shape. And if you look at the cursor here, you can see that there's a little circle around that cursor. So if I click inside of that shape, my text will now be confined to the edges of my shape's path. Now there are a couple important settings here that you'll need to know in order to make everything look perfect. Going to the paragraph panel here, we want to make sure we have the justify last centered setting enabled because otherwise you end up getting these weird results that the text doesn't fill up the entire shape. However, with this paragraph setting picked, our text will automatically space apart to fit against the edges and therefore create the outline of our shape. In this case, I don't have quite enough text, so I'll just press Command or Control C and then Command or Control V a couple times to fill in the rest of my shape like so. From here, you can press the check mark to save those changes and you can edit the text as normal, such as highlighting the whole text and changing the size of it, changing the font, the color or anything like that. Anyways, once you're happy, just click the check mark and now you have your text filling that shape. Now, what if you want to do some creative effects with this, such as adding an outline or a shape color, for example? Well, in that case, you're going to want to link your layers so that things move together. Because, for example, if I grab this type layer and grab the move tool by pressing V and I move this around, if I went to go and edit my shape layer now, you can see that it's still in its original position. So undoing that, we want to make sure that our shape layer and our text layer move together wherever we take them on our canvas. So shift clicking both those layers, I'll click the link icon. So now when I I grab my move tool regardless of which layer is selected they will both move together that way you can easily customize your text or the shape without worrying whether they're aligning or not so for example I'm going to add an outline to my star so grabbing the shape tool by pressing U I'll set the stroke to black and I'll set the fill color to white now I could spice this up a little more by adding a new color fill layer to the background by going to layer new fill layer solid color I could choose a nice light blue color like so click OK. And then to add a little bit of extra pizzazz, we could double click on the star layer, add an inner shadow and increase that a little as well. So now it kind of looks like we have a layer with a shape punched through it and our text lying beneath it kind of a fun effect with some basic tools. All right, so that is the first way of filling shapes with text in Photoshop. And these same steps apply no matter what shape you're working with. But now let's go through a second example where we're going to warp our text to create some more creative looks that is better suited when you only have a couple of words rather than many lines of text. In this next example, I've created a new document and I found this PNG file of a heart that I'll link down below if you're interested. From here, I'm going to add some text layers over the this heart and then warp them to make it look like our text is basically creating the shape of a heart. To begin, I'll grab my type tool by pressing T and I'll click once on my heart layer. I'll then change the color to white and I'll also set my font to something bold like so. Now I'll just type in love for this example, grab my move tool by pressing V and I'll scale this up like so. Now the goal here is to make your text layer fill to each edge of your shape so that way you don't have to do crazy warping adjustments and it will make your life a little bit easier. So this looks pretty good to me here. Since my text color is white and also my background is white, I'm gonna add a new color fill layer by going to layer, new fill layer, solid color, and I'll set this to a nice pink color for example here. Let's do this, perfect. Now I can see where the edges of my white text are. Once you're happy with the positioning and the style of your text, we'll right click on that text layer and go to convert to smart object. That way we can actually warp our text. 
pressing Command or Control T, right clicking and going to warp, we can now adjust these anchor points here to warp our text to fit the edges of our shape, which in this case is this heart graphic. But of course, this would work for any shape that you're working with. It doesn't matter. It's just going to change how you warp your text. Now, what you want to do is try to have your text follow the edges as best as possible. And it's okay if it extends past the edge just a little bit, because we'll use a layer mask later on to touch everything up. Now, in this case, I'd like to move the edge of the O and the V down a bit. So I'm going to click on the split option, choose the vertical split, go and click over my warp guides, add one in the middle, and I'll drag this down like so to adjust the warp split in a bit of a different way to suit my heart shape. So something like this looks good for me. Now I'll just repeat this process with two other text layers to fill in the rest of the heart. So once again, grabbing my type tool, we're pressing T, I'll type in love again, scale this up, make sure it goes edge to edge on my shape so I don't have to do as much work with warping. Then I'll convert this text layer into a smart object by right clicking and going to convert to smart object. Then I'll press Command or Control T, right click, go to warp, and we'll repeat this process again, but now warping to the different area of the heart like so, or whatever shape you're working with. Now I'll add one more type layer by pressing T, clicking on my canvas, typing in love one more time, grabbing my move tool by pressing V, scaling that up, filling in this lower area like so, converting this layer to a smart object, pressing Command or Control T, right clicking, going to warp, and now we can finish up these warping adjustments to cover up the bottom of the heart. Now this version of the word doesn't need to be as legible as the other ones, but it is up to you and your style preferences for this. The goal here is to just fill out the bottom of the shape so we have that nice point. Now with all of our layers in place, to make this look absolutely perfect, we can create a selection of our shape or the graphic and use that to refine all of our text layers at once. Shift clicking all my text layers, I'll press Command or Control G to group them. Now now we can activate a selection of the heart graphic by holding command or control and clicking on the heart layer thumbnail. That will turn that into a selection like so, which we can now apply to a layer mask of the entire group. So clicking the group layer and then clicking the layer mask icon like so. We can now turn off the heart shape layer and we are left with our text warped and masked to perfectly fit the shape of our original heart. Now, this selection method that I just did will only work when you have graphics with a transparent background, but it will also work if you are using a regular shape layer in Photoshop. You can just hold Command or Control and click on the thumbnail of that layer to activate a selection of it. So now with that, we have successfully warped our text into place, and you can double click any of these smart objects to edit the color, for example, of those text layers as well as the font or anything else. Just make sure to press Command or Control S when you're done so that those changes are shown back in your original project. So those were two different ways to fill shapes with text in Photoshop. And if you want to learn more about working with text in Photoshop, I'll leave a link down below to an article I wrote on my website sharing everything you need to know about using the type tool so that you can get the most out of these types of projects.